Well, welcome to another edition of Radio Friends again. Uh, I'm Steve Parker here in, uh, let's see, where am I? I'm in Berlin, Connecticut today. And uh, we've got already guys lining up, so we'll probably be having some folks uh, coming into the show. And also kind of like uh, co-hosting with me today is John Leslie. Hey, John, uh, just uh, introduce yourself and what you guys are all about over there. John Leslie, I am talking to you from Winter Haven, Florida. We are equidistant from Orlando and Tampa. It takes one hour to get to Tampa and four hours to get to Orlando because of the traffic. (laughs) (laughs) And and, uh, I am the host of a podcast called Talking About Radio. And we've done our 150th, I think, episode of it. And we're recording this today. And it will be on one of the upcoming episodes of Talking About Radio. Maybe what we'll do is just run around the room with who here is here so far. And, uh, <clears throat> uh, as I mentioned, John Leslie is here. So anyone who's joining us today, uh, please understand that uh, John is uh, does a great uh, podcast called Talking About Radio. And he is um, uh, he's kind of like um, co-hosting with me and recording it for his program. So uh, so so, John, um, why don't we uh, why don't I start by introducing you where you are? and uh and what your program is okay go ahead <laughs> ladies and gentlemen <laughs> here's john leslie <laughs> your turn uh, i thought i just did that <laughs> no well we're, we're, we're just basically uh we're, we're rehashing here okay I, so uh, so what's the show what's the show about show about nothing talking right. about radio <laughs> yeah that if you had to guess what talking about radio is about what would you guess uh, porn addiction. <laughs> you got it. I spent the better part of 50 years on the air doing morning shows. And there was still a lot of creative energy in me after I quit doing that. And uh, my good friend, John Morgan, talked me into doing a podcast. I didn't want to do it, but I started it, fell in love with it. I have interviewed some of the almost all of the top, the very top names in the radio industry, some of the guys from this group, and also a lot of people who are not at the top. They are the hardworking, everyday disc jockeys, like the guy I I interviewed this morning down in New South Wales, uh, Australia, and last week a guy up in Alaska who has a... A uh, total survey, uh, uh, a total cum of 250 people. <laughs> that was a great interview, by the way. A great, you know, thank you. Yes, it was. <laughs> and in fact, the guy that I, uh, uh, Greg Henry, who I interviewed this morning in New South Wales, Australia, was so taken by the interview I did with uh, uh, the guy, uh, Patrick, up in Alaska that they have become friends. They've contacted each other and are now communicating with each other. All right, well, I'm going to I'm going to uh, take it on my end, John, just quickly so we can go around the, uh, the room on my side from uh, Radio Friends again because we have some of our friends lining up. And I do want Lee Gordon just came in. I do want to remind everyone that uh that we are really uh honored to have John Leslie um recording our our show here that we've been doing for the last couple of years for uh, talking about uh, radio. So if you love- let's make it interesting. <laughs> make it interesting. You mean it hasn't been interesting <laughs> so far. All right. I'm just going to do a quick intro like I did last week for all you guys. We have Tracy Carmen here. Uh, Tracy, of course, is the, is the jingle king. Uh, we've got Ed Bruder is here. Ed is um, uh, probably a, an amazing archive archivist between Ed and Tracy. You can find just about anything, air checks and uh, jingles and everything else. Um, Pete Salance here. Uh, Pete has been pretty much a, a million stations. Bob Craig is uh, st- uh, stationed right now in uh, Pennsylvania. Uh, Judge Harrigan is with us. Uh, Bob Craig, as I mentioned. Dick Call. Ed, I, I'm, I'm just, I think I'm just, I think I've covered most of you three times. Go ahead. All yeah, right. So <laughs> Dick Call, Dick Call, and Jim Harrington, and you said Lee Gordon. Oh, you got Jim Harrington. Yeah, yeah, he's, he's here. here. Oh, I didn't yeah. have him on my Bob Lawrence. Hello, yeah. oh, Jim Harrington. Yeah. Amen. 
All right. So, um, of course, uh, I just want to remind all of you again, which I have to do from time to time, that John Leslie is also recording this for his podcast, which is talking about radio. And, John, I want to um, uh, just say that if you have to do any editing to what we've destroyed so far on Radio Friends again, feel free. <laughs> Clean it up. And, you know, it, it is so cool because um, we have got we actually have a, a, a new one today and hope he's going to stay with us, hopefully, at least through the program and maybe come back. Jay unless, he, Jones, unless he gets too. another job. <laughs> Jaybo <laughs> Jones, 70s on 7 uh, on Sirius. Uh, we've been listening to uh, to Jaybo for a long, long time. And uh, Jaybo, <clears throat> I understand, as you put on Facebook, you were part of the 7%, Jaybo. Can you tell us a little bit about um, maybe uh, your uh, where what just happened? And then let's go back a little bit and talk about what your uh, your career has been like. Because, um, you know, you're, we like to do that to the first guy that's uh, new to us and just fry you so and see if you come back. <laughs> like, I'm the, new, I'm, I'm the Tom Brady. It's like a Tom Brady roast today. <laughs> uh, but it's a, it's an honor to be here. Uh, Steve God, you and I go way back. I loved Hartford. Hartford's uh, and Hartford in, in Rhode Island and Providence are my two second homes. And uh, yeah, I mean, I was at ROR for 10 years, had a great run there, did afternoons. And I, you know, I, I got the ratings up to number two adults. Wasn't enough. And, um, I'm actually number three in men. I was number two in adults. And if you push, take out the sports hub, that is talk. I was really the number one music show, but uh, you know, we know what's going on in the industry. It's, it's very heartbreaking. Uh, I think the, the benefit, I put a quote on my Facebook saying in every adversity, there's a, a seed of equal greater benefit. And you realize that, look at this call. This call is, and I'll get if I get small C, I apologize, but that there's still love and passion for what we do and what we did and what we will do. This is the new technology. This is the new conference call. And so I, I'm excited about my next opportunity, whatever that is. And uh, and I'm still on 70s on 7, which is the greatest blessing and gift I've ever gotten. I mean, I, I always believe that dreams c came true. And... Um, you know, I wanted to be on WRKO, and so nature created a WRKO today, and that's 70s on 7. So, yeah, I'm uh, I'm excited to be here with you guys and talk about some great stories. I mean, Pete Salant, I, oh, my God. I mean, look <laughs> at you guys. I mean, I loved I, – I don't want to jump in and take too much time, but, uh, I mean, I loved Why and Why. I wanted to work at Y and Y with the jingles and Randy Day, Randy Davis and Bill St. James. Um, it was one of the greatest ACs I ever heard. I used to listen to it on the listen line when I was at JB 105 in Providence. And Tom Hunter kind of flipped JB from a CHR to a hot AC and used Pete, your station, as a template. We wow. got your jingles. And Y and Y was the template for our station in Providence. And I just was so enamored with the presentation and the jocks and what they did. And I got a, go a couple of great Bill St. James stories. You know, I don't have to go there now, but um, so it's just an honor to be here with you guys. And uh, and it restores my confidence that this medium still reaches 90 million people a week. And uh, we just got to find a way to uh, uh, keep it going. And maybe this is an overhaul we're experiencing where maybe you know, uh, a bunch of John Fullers will jump back in and pick up, <laughs> pick up these stations and let's just keep going. You know, that's what I'm hoping for. Maybe it's uh, maybe it's a, a foolish dream or I'm delusional, but I think uh, this tremendous passion and connection, I mean, without what we do and what we did, then radio is just Spotify. You know, we can't, that, that we are the glue that connects to the community and whether it's a great 15 second break or a fantastic morning show break, Elvis Duran was interviewed in one of his many, many documentaries he gets. He's a great talent and a wonderful guy. He said, the mo they asked him, what was the most memorable show you've ever done on Z100? He says, 9-11. Mm. Because we stopped the music, people were crying. He says, that is what we do. And we, we can't forget that. So... Uh that's my you, this is this is uh jaybo jones the uh who just uh it's, it's his first time on radio friends again and uh, occasionally i will remind everyone that that uh we also have john leslie with us and uh john is 
talking about radio, um, which you've got to check out his podcast. He's interviewed everybody. He's always looking for more people to interview. So we know a lot of people like to listen and watch this Zoom uh, from Radio Friends again. Uh, I'll do the, it. Over the last couple of years. Hey, so, you got um, me. Ooh, Sign me up. John, so give, him, give him, a, give him a, uh, uh, an email address. Okay, I'll do that. And again, but just a quick <laughs> reminder, anybody who's got a problem, um, you know, needs to be in the broadcast protection program uh, and you don't want, you know, you if you're saying, hey, I don't want John recording me to go all over the world. Why would I want that? But anyways, uh, yep. If if you want, um, anybody can send me an email. I guess that's the best way to go before I do anything. Uh, Dave Overson and I talked about setting up a Facebook page and doing all that kind of stuff. Oh. So we may. Um, but I'm Steve Parker uh, at hotmail.com would probably be the best thing. It's, oh, yeah. Steve Parker at hotmail.com. Uh, that's only because if I give my Odyssey address, none of us will ever be seen or heard of again. <laughs> this will be gone. Yep. So Steve, uh, Steve Parker at hotmail.com. Just send us a note if you'd like to be part of it. And again, like I said, we're recording, so we just have to make that very, very, very clear. Um, uh, J-Mo, we're going to I want to come back to you at some point in time. And uh, but I want to uh, check in with the other guys because uh, I would like to hear. I, I know we'd all love to hear the Bill, J Bill St. James stories. That'll you know. I, I, we probably all have a few of those. Um, so oh, yes. so let's, let me just throw it back to, uh, to John, uh, John Leslie real quick. Uh, John, uh, why don't you just say hi and just uh, where, where's your, uh, where's your studio, John? We are located in Winter Haven, Florida. Winter Haven, Florida. Winter Haven, Florida. One hour from Tampa, one hour from Orlando, and about three minutes away from Legoland. Wasn't that where the Red Sox had the, their training camp yeah. for years? Yeah, that's right. For years that's and right. years. In fact, one of the guests I had on my uh, podcast talking about radio was Joe Castiglione. Wow. Uh, Long-time voice of the Red Sox. Sure. Royalty. And, yeah. yeah, And uh, it, it was just so great. He did the interview in his car on the way to work. <clears throat> and, and his closing line was, I've got to stop now. I'm at Fenway Park. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. What a you know, what a great way to hit the outro. You know? Can you yeah. believe it? That's right. <laughs> I've known <laughs> Joe. I've known and Joe. By the way, John. Hello. Legoland is one of my favorite parks. A lot better than Disney or any of the others. I love Legoland. Took my grandkids there a couple of times. And yeah. uh, it's the former home of Cypress Gardens. That, that's exactly right. And we get a free, they do fireworks every night. And we get to sit out in the front porch and see their fireworks every night. Uh, that is, if you want to watch fireworks every night, after the second time, it's pretty monotonous. But uh, now they have this new park in there, Peppa Pig. You guys know what Peppa Pig is? Yes. Well, the Legoland now has a, another park inside of it, Peppa Pig Park. And that attracts as many people as Legoland does. Wow. That's park very fanatic. Had a pig park. Hmm? Yes. Had a pig park. That's kind of a fanatic uh, title. The <laughs> three P's, you know. The pig park. They must sell a lot of bacon. Uh, <laughs> uh, that, uh, you that, have a three-year-old uh, granddaughter you're very familiar with, Peppa Pig. That parking or the, the line going yes. in there every day is wraps all the way around that huge parking lot. It's $26 for every car that goes through that gate. I envision a park, Legoland Park, that you can take apart at nighttime and re <laughs> rebuild it. I'm sorry, I'm going to build something about Okay, good run. Uh, we we used to own a station on uh, Y one hundred and six in Orlando, W H L Y. Is that right? Yeah. yeah. Back in nineteen seventy eight seventy nine, we bought it all also with a small AM in Leesburg, and I had to oversee that. Used to come down there all the time, uh, but uh, Orlando has changed quite a deal. But still, yes. that's uh, that's quite some place. You know what the six P's are, right? No, I don't. The six P's are. Um, poor planning produces piss poor performance. <laughs> and um, I, I give awesome. uh, lectures at uh, Columbia Grad School, uh, business grad school every so often. And I ask that same question. 
And then when I explain what it, you know, what the six P's mean, the glassy eyes all of a sudden focus because <laughs> they get it. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I don't think you can say more more succinctly. I just want to say it's a thrill to see J Bo because I listen to you all the time on 70s on seven. And you Thank have you. a co a co cohort um up in Edmonton with the sexiest female voice on radio. Uh and one day I would love to meet her. Uh she's between you and her, I, I enjoy 70s very, very much. No, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, she, Lisa. Lisa. Lisa's great. She's terrific. So they they wanted to, you know, we the, we all know the challenge with this format to try to keep it relevant, and uh, so they brought her in. But she's a really nice nice kid and a hard worker yeah. and a real pro. I really really like her. She's really nice. But thank you. I really appreciate that. Uh, it's been an incredible run. I mean, they've evolved it. About two years ago, they said, "Okay, no more talking over intros, Jabo." <laughs> and you know, I swear to God, and they and, and Human Newman <laughs> calls me and says, "Okay, I'm about to tell you something that I promise you've never heard in radio. You know how for the last thirty years they you, they've told you to talk less. I'm changing that. We want you to talk more." And I'm like, "So he goes, and you'll what do you mean?" He goes, "Yeah, stories. Keep it a minute. If you have to go longer, we don't care. They want us to be the guy on the bar, has to sit next to you on the bar." Uh, telling stories they don't want us to be jocks and it was you know they even asked us to change we were talking about processing earlier uh pete they even had us back down my process our processing me and jj spider hey you know uh no. hey ed how are you good to see you man uh and so yeah so i don't want to take away your your time dick but yeah it, they they basically uh, changed it over they want us to uh you know be much more personable but it's a bit of a fun challenge and i enjoy it but you know yeah, something, yeah. Jabo, I think the thing that that um, is interesting to all of us, because um, I mean, I I love, you know, 70 is on seven and what you're doing there and you're still on seven. It seems like the if, if, if the demographic changes or the uh, I don't know, and sometimes like 60s used to be on six eh, eh, not there anymore. You got to go, you know, and then 40s was on four. I mean, it's it's mm. all changed now. But how many years, uh, Jabo, have you been um, have you have you been with uh, us? <laughs> And uh, I just saw, excuse me, Ed Mitchell just joined us and I got to, I got to. And Chuck a, Martin. And Chuck Martin. Yep. I got to qualify this because mm -hmm. we are with uh, John and Leslie and talking about radio. Uh, if you don't want to be recorded and um, you want to stay inside the uh, the broadcast protection program, um, then you're going to have to leave or, uh, or you can blacken your screen or, you know, just sit by and not say anything, but we just got to make sure on that. So j -Bo, um, does anybody uh, make uh, any kind of money? I mean, I know, of course, Bill Rock uh, starting Elvis Radio and him doing his thing. And when I heard J. Bo Jones, I said, I'm serious. I think I know that guy. So how did this all come together, J. Bo? And how did you, that's the new world. So how did you get the serious connection? It, it was uh, one of those wild things. Uh, I was programming Mix in Boston and I left. They wanted to go in a different direction. And I announced my resignation to Mix back in 2012. And I, I wrote a, you know, a nice email. I said, CBS treated me really nice. Thanks to Greg Strassel. And I wanted to exit positive because it was a great run. I really enjoyed working there. I hired Carson and Kennedy. We're now number one. Uh, it took Maddie to leave, but uh, that's the morning show there at Mix. And when the email went out, um, I looked on my phone and it was Kid Kelly. Uh, who was then the VP of programming of music programming it was him and human Newman on the phone. And they said, do you want to come back on the air? And I said, really? You want me to come on the air there? And they said, yeah, you can do that. You're, you know, J Bo Jones on the phones. Now at the time, I think they had just um, let go Broadway bill. Broadway bill was doing CBS FM and seventies. Um, but I think it was hard because at the time we would do our, they do their breaks and then send them into a programming coordinator and the program coordinator would load them in, in their next gen or wide orbit. And Broadway was doing his rhyme, his rhyme, great, amazing rhymey act, but it wasn't, it was someone else loading it in. So it wasn't exactly, he, you know, he does it. He has to run that board. Right. So that the, the uh, timing was off. So, uh, he ended up leaving and they, and I auditioned for it 
And it took about, it was funny because it was like, audition, sounds great. We'll be in touch. Two weeks go by, nothing. Another <laughs> week goes by, nothing. So I call Human Newman. I said, hey, how you doing? Now, I had just left Mix. I was ready to, I didn't want to program anymore. I just wanted to relax and maybe be on the air. And I had a little bit of severance. I had a little bit in the bank. I wasn't rich. I couldn't really retire, but I wanted a break. So I wasn't in any rush. And I was putting us together a studio at home anyway. I didn't have any equipment yet. And human says, yeah, I'll, I'll get back to you. Another three weeks goes by. Says, what do you think? Can we, can we end? I don't know. I don't know, j -Bo. All right, well, call me if it's going to happen. Another three weeks go by. I don't think it's going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> and, so, and I'm like, okay. Well, that was, and then another two weeks go by. You start tomorrow. I swear <laughs> to God. And I said, You mean, uh, yeah, yeah, you're gonna. All right. So, but by that time, I had the equipment and, uh, and that's how it happened. Uh, Kid Kelly called me and they wanted me to do it, but it took these big companies, it takes a while to get things going now. Um, and that's what happened. And I started in the first year and a half, I sucked. <laughs> was, they hated me. <laughs> you know, and you, the air check sessions were terrible. It's like, you know, and I'm like, and, I, and human was a sweetheart. We're, act, we're good friends, but he was new <laughs> as a programmer. So he wasn't as astute in how to do an air check. So he just read my butt. And, and, but finally I got a groove and I, you know, I listened to magic Matt a little bit and I go, all right. And, that, and then I listened to JJ Walker, who is spider Harrison. All right. And then finally I got my groove. And then things smoothened out. And it was, it's been wonderful ever since. And then when they changed everything for us to be more one-on-one, -on -one, that was the, that was while at first I'm like, I want to, I want to talk over a love train. Mm -hmm. I want to start, get down tonight and talk over it. It's seventies on seven. It's, you know, WRKO, WABC, WLS. Nope. Sorry. <laughs> and, but once I got comfortable with it and I, the, what really, won me over on that that doesn't mean you know talking over a song songs is bad it's just they wanted to bring in a younger demo and try to experiment but what first would made me happy when i did the stop down i realized after a few weeks okay i'm running out of sugarloaf stories i don't have another story for don't call us we'll call you anymore i've said it three times so I had to dig, go inside and start coming up with real true memories of the, of being on the air, my family. And when I started doing that, my Twitter started lighting up and our Facebook page started lining up. Oh my God, j -Bo, that story about this, and I swear to God, got me through my remission. Hmm. I got people reaching out, connecting with me on a real human level. And I'm like, oh my God, this is, maybe they're right. Maybe, maybe doing this, there's something. And it hasn't stopped. And now I'll share stories about my wife. I'll share stories about being a parent. It's like a mini morning show, but I keep it, you know, the longest break sometimes will be a minute, you know, sometimes it'll go a little longer, but those stories now really resonate and people really like it. And I'm like, maybe they're onto something. So it made it easier to get that validation from the audience on Twitter and on Facebook. And, um, and that's what made it easier. So yeah, I've been, I've been there for, uh, since 2012 and, um, it's been wonderful. A couple of highlights. I mean, I get to meet Tony Orlando, Tony Orlando listens all the time. <clears throat> My friend is an artist in Vegas and said, Hey, Tony Orlando wants to talk to you. <laughs> what? Here's his number. He, and, and I'm like, okay, so I, um, uh, I end up going to see Tony Orlando and Mohegan Sun, and I called him before, and he says, "You, I listen to you guys all the time. You know who listens to you, J-Bo? Carrot Top. Every time I mention Tony Orlando, Carrot Top texts him. You're talking about him again. <laughs> and so I got to go backstage and meet Tony Orlando. He gave me a big hug, and he says, thank you for doing this. You, We we love how you talk about our art, uh, us. And, and he goes, come on, let's go meet the band backstage. I'm walking backstage with my wife and he goes, Jabo, do you know Andy Kim? 
<laughs> it's <laughs> Andy Kim. And I'm like, oh my gosh. And I never met Andy Kim. Rock me gently. Sugar, sugar. Yeah. That Tony Orlando show was fantastic because uh, Andy Kim gets on stage and a video pops up of the cartoon of the Archies to Sugar, Sugar. And the audience is almost in tears. You know, they can't believe that we're recreating our childhood right before our eyes. So stuff like that. I got to, I did, uh, when they moved me to Nights, I I didn't want to just, after 10 years of doing Afternoons, I didn't want to just end up at night replacing J.J. Walker. I, I, I felt that that was kind of like a sad, negative <clears throat> presentation um how i wanted to roll that out so i got tony orlando to do a video with me backstage and i asked him i'm replacing jj walker how am i gonna do that and the camera pants to him my wife did it and he says i got an idea play more tony orlando and i did that with donny osmond and henry winkler at like the comic con so that was a fun way for me to get on nights and make it a positive saying goodbye to jj who was there for 20 years in that day part. And uh, so it worked out. And uh, the audience uh, does does like those stories. So it's been it's been cool. I really enjoy it. Now, for those of you who are just joining us, uh, that's J-Bo Jones. You've heard about in 70s on 7 for uh, for years and years since 2012. Because I, I, as far as I know, since I've been listening to 70s on 7, it's been J-Bo. And I said, nobody else can have the name. Nobody's got the name freaking J-Bo. Come on. <laughs> Come on. Um, but, uh, and, then uh, Dave Nagel just joined us and so many of you guys was really cool. And I want, I kind of want to back off and just for those of you, especially on the air during the seventies, it could be kind of cool for you to, you know, just, uh, ask j -Bo anything you want because he lives <laughs> in that world every single day. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's really something. And again, uh, we are recording this for, uh, for John Leslie and, uh, talking about radio, which you got to check out. His podcast is awesome. No matter who you think of, whether, oh, my God, we Pete Salant's been on with him a couple of times, and uh, uh, Joe Cipriano has been on with him, and Randy West, and this, the list um, is is incredible. Um, and then, of course, um, uh, and he just did a whole thing about the, um, what was it, uh, if, if you could real quick, John, what was the uh, program, the uh, CBS program called, I mean, NBC program NBC. called? NBC, hmm. the retrospective. Yeah. Yeah, uh, it was... Uh... Maybe some of you are aware of this. Dale Parsons, who was the director of operations at uh, WNBC in its final days before WFAN took over the frequency and, and the dial position there. Uh, on the very last day, Dale Parsons did a 90-minute retrospective of 66 years of WNBC. It aired on the last day that WNBC existed. And then it never aired again, this program. And he put it away in his vault. And he gave me permission to remaster it. And so on April 12th, we aired a special 66 years of WNBC, uninterrupted, uh, commercial-free podcast. And I was just talking to my wife about it last night. Um, I have done a lot of things in my broadcast career all over the world all kinds of programs that podcast is probably the one of the best pieces mm. that i was ever involved in wow it's what it's so much like like a, a, it really is like a walk through history you know since before radio i mean the, the it starts um about the concept of radio and having one in every home. Isn't that uh, where it starts? Yeah, exactly. That's where it starts. And it was Mar not the Marconi. Was it Marconi? Who's not Marconi? It was General Sarnoff. Sarnoff. Somebody who said, we're going to, we're going to make radio an appliance that will be in everybody's home. Yeah. That was David Sarnoff's concept. Sarnoff? Yeah. yeah. When he was pushing yeah. the whole thing to RCA. And that's, that's where this retrospective starts at that point. And uh, how Dale Parsons came up with all of this audio. Awesome. He got it from Bob Hope, from Johnny Carson, from Fred de, de Cordova. Uh, and he listed a whole big, long list of names of people who contributed audio. And, and, and it's all in that program. And it's, uh, it, it kind of makes the hair stand up on your neck when you listen to it. Uh, it it's just riveting. And I think that's, and that's what really, uh, 
I'm, I'm thankful to Pete Saland, who's been on his. You got to hear Pete's got a couple of interviews that are on there. Great. But I think the first one I listened to, John, was when you said everybody knows everybody. And it is the six degrees of like broadcast separation. And that was kind of like I said, oh, we got to get him with us because that's why we started this whole reunion <laughs> thing years ago when we we're putting together the WDRC reunion. And um, that's why this is still going on. But uh, so if anybody has any any questions, what? I was going to say, I have two program directors, two program managers for my podcast. Pete Saland is one of them. And John Morgan. Uh, Jay, well, you know John Morgan. Did you work with him in Boston? He was at ODS. No. No, no, that was no, before they my time, other. but I know of them. Yeah, that was before my time. Yeah, and so uh, if I do anything that's not real good, <laughs> I hear from Pete Salant, <laughs> and while he's talking to me, my cell phone's ringing, and it's John Morgan. <laughs> <laughs> well, Pete we is only also, we only want to help. Pete, I, Pete is also <laughs> my, uh, don't Pete's think my, I appreciate it. Pete's my program director. I'm, I'm joking. I really appreciate it. Pete will always comment about this or do this or do this. So I always look to Pete if there's anything we've got to we've got to change. So if anybody wants to just pipe in and uh, you know if you, if you can give your name before you ask a question, it's going to help a lot with uh, with John Leslie's um, uh, talking about radio. So if you can say, hey, you know, even though we all know who you are, does anybody out there want to ask about Sirius or Seventies on Seven? I, I want to. I, I just want to briefly ask uh, uh, Jay Bo. You were on uh, Kiss in Hartford, were you? Yeah, yeah. I uh, I ran Kiss in Hartford in right. starting in ninety one. I left Eagle one oh six in Philly and that was my first program director job at Kiss in Hartford from ninety one to ninety nine. And um it was a great, great time. I became very good friends with Jeremy Savage and Tim Montgomery, Larry Herb, and uh yeah, and I hired Gary Craig to um replace Je Ed and Jeremy. <laughs> We moved Jerry to afternoons and we hired Gary Craig and six a year later, we're number one. Hey, Jay, well, if I can jump in about sure. Gary Craig, you, you may recall that uh, TIC uh, sued him. He had a not, uh, he had a, not an NDA, a non-compete. I actually testified in court for Gary and uh, because they were trying to stop him from going over to kiss. They okay. fired him. Gary, Gary Zenobi fired Gary Craig. And then wouldn't that would not allow him to work at another radio station. Really? <laughs> and yeah, that's a true story. And uh I testified oh for Gary and the judge kind of threw it out of court. He said, get out of here. We they actually presented the argument that he could be heard, some cockamamie argument that he could be heard all over the world and he would damage their ratings and all this stuff, which is a bunch of bullshit. And then um they tried, they actually presented the judge with an arbitron report. And I remember the judge trying looking at it and saying, "What is this? What do you? What do you? you what, what am I supposed that? to do with this?" He like turned it upside down. He couldn't figure it out. He said, "I can't believe that they're giving the judge an Arbitron report." And anyway, long story short, they threw it out. And Gary yeah. was working, and Tim Montgomery put him on the air the next day. Yeah, He's in Hebrew. I think, it, you know, <laughs> let, let me share this. So we we made this is a I can't believe that story. I didn't know that. True. We made the decision to hire Gary, and but we had a non compete, and. I realized we were segueing into his famous "We Are the Children" toy drive. And Pete, you, uh, Steve, you know that. Oh yeah. All you guys get out of get the Gary yeah, had this toy drive, it. and well, now that he's off the air, couldn't do it. So I came up with the idea. I said, "Wait a minute, why don't we do it?" Mm -hmm. And I went to Tim. I said, "Let's do Dick Gary's toy drive." Well, he can't come on the air, but his wife can. Oh, so his I wife. Am. Diane came in the studio and I got this was I got the we are the world. Da, 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 da. She came in and with Ed and Jeremy, Ed and Jeremy said, we're going to lay down our competitive swords for the kids this Christmas. And Gary's wife and she had a statement because of radio competition rules gary cannot be here today but thank you so much to kiss 95.7 ed and jeremy we are going to continue the we are the Ch we are the children uh toy drive in honor of these children because that's more important than our competitive nature and whatever the words were and the phones ringing people were crying thank you so much ed and jeremy oh my and that was the first beginning of our relationship with gary craig and we hired him six months later. And 
we went to, I was the fastest rise to number one I'd ever experienced. And Tim was so great. Tim Montgomery, um, we bought, we created TV commercials using a local producer and we went on the street and I was kind of the director and I would, we went on the street and we got testimonies from people. Hey, you know where Gary Craig's going? He's crossing the street. And we did a make the switch campaign. And we had these people, we had these three almost golden girl type ladies in one of the clips saying, Craig, didn't they dump him? <laughs> no, no, he's moving over here. And that was how we launched him on Kiss. And man, it was so fast uh, what happened, how people jumped over. And we just took it. Tim was so smart to take advantage. He actually did a, a focus group. When Gary was fired, Tim jumped in the field with Richard Harker and did a focus group study to see where Gary was in the perception of the market. Number one, mm -hmm. he was the number one talent in the market. And so we had that built in connection and we hired him. But when we announced it, uh, this is before email and social media, we got about 40, 30 calls at the front desk. We hate Craig. You can't bring him over. We don't like him. And Tim, you know, said, are we doing the wrong thing? I said, no, no, no. That's just active. It's okay. But he, he took kiss was number one in every demo. And it was it was the beginning of the next generation of Kiss, and we didn't have we had our as P, you know we had our stick in Meredith. Yes, our our trans TIC was in Avon, and we still we won and we we pushed TIC out of the format. But it was Tim gets a lot of the credit because he was very bold, hired Gary Craig. He's the Rick D's of the market at the time, and um and he marketed him, and it was just a a lesson in how to do something right. When you have an opportunity, you have a talent like that who was built in and you can bring them, it just lifts the whole, you know, the tide, rose all the, the tide. And um, it was, and he, he was a joy to work with. He's a tough guy, you know, we had great stories, but oh, yeah. man, he was talented, you know? Yeah. You know, yeah, I, I, he's a, well, go ahead. I was going to say, uh, uh, Jay, you, you, you mentioned three Daves that just brought, some memories back into my head. One of them was, uh, uh, well, Bill Lee. Yeah, I worked with him in San Francisco, KFRC. And, you know, when you said that it didn't work with uh, the him preloading the intros and the way Bill Lee operated, I mean, with those rhyming, and no one does it better than him. He is the mm. best of the best. But I could see how that no would one. not work because you had to be right there because I mean, he hit that intro dead ass on, boy, and, uh, you know, there was no yeah. mistake. But also, J.J. Um, uh, Walker, uh, you know, I gave him his first job in Jacksonville. Uh, we, uh, Paul Drew put me down in Jacksonville there at uh, uh, WIVY. We changed it to Y103. We went up against the Big Eight. Now, I'm looking for people to go on we were we were still doing the old format there and everything so this kid comes in didn't even have a tape he had a resume handwritten by the way <laughs> and no tape and uh he sat down i said well, you know he said well you know i like radio you know i did it in high school and everything and he had this voice that you know i mean my god yeah and i said well that's what interested me because he had that voice that just big booming voice so i said well you don't have a tape i said why don't you go into the production room i said give me four cuts let me hear how you do two records and I put an MP, you would know uh, Paul <laughs> Mayer, all the Oh, very, Mayer. very well, he was sure. Our, our, that <laughs> waves. So I said, Paul, go in there with this kid in here, see what he's got. Let him segue a couple of records. Well, he came back with this short little uh, tape there. I got to tell you, I was blown away. I mean, he had this voice. He didn't know how to use it, but his mechanics were good. And I was looking, and I put him right into afternoon drive, and it wasn't a mistake because, quite frankly, when we went on the air, um, uh, we had a 2.1. Eight was like a 16.4. In our first ARB, we went 
and ape went down to 7.8 i mean oh my god well chuck with you as a t with you as his teacher he must have gotten really good really fast well i worked with him quite a bit i really really did and you know he's still in touch with me every now and then and you know he as we all up. are, as all of your little babies are, sure. <laughs> Last week, he calls me up on the phone. I did, It was a message. I wasn't home, but the here's the message. I'm looking for a voiceover guy. Oh, oh, oh. And I mean, the, the phone was just rattling on like that. And the other name you mentioned, Jay, was Rick Pease. Uh, I When I was program director at KHJ, and I wanted to make a change in the morning there, and I went to Memphis, and I did get him. But I had to rob four banks in order oh, to get him, you know, to get oh, him out there. So you, you hired Rick Dees. You yeah, brought Rick, Rick Dees. Oh my God! I brought Rick Dees wow. to, to Los Angeles at KHJ, and I mean that wow. boy, that legendary. I mean, you know, he that made sure some, he Man, made some I, great moves. I'd love to share my Rick Dees story. I, I don't know if I have my stories as good as yours, Chuck, but I'd love to share. Can I share a quick Rick Dees sure. story? I'd love to hear them. So I was at XLO in Worcester running WXLO, the hot AC, and we carried Rick Dees on the weekend because the boss, the bigger markets carried AT40 with Ryan, and then the the the, the shadow markets carried Dees. And I was friends with their producer, Clarence Barnes, and I thought, you know, I'm going to send Clarence a shout out for Rick. Maybe they'll put it on the show. And it was Halloween. I said, hey, Rick, it's Jay Bo at your station in Worcester, XLO. Uh, congratulations at our pumpkin carving contest. Your pumpkin scared the kids the most. And it was quick. Sure, they loved it. And he put it right on the air. And the next week, it was there was me on the top 40. And then I sent a note to Clarence. I said, hey, anytime you, you know, sometimes you guys know you just got to ask. Sometimes you ask, you, you'd be surprised how the door opens. I said, if you ever need a fill-in, I could do it. I know I could do it. Thanks, j And I sent an air check. I followed up with an air check like a couple weeks later. I felt really good about this show I did. And I said, I'm going to send it to him. That's in October of 2006. 2007 in May, right around this time, the Kentucky Derby, Clarence, I'm on the air at XLO. Clarence calls me. I'm like, hey, what's up? Hey, Dees is going to call you in two minutes. He wants you to fill in. Don't tell him I called. <laughs> I swear to God. I look down at my phone. It's 818. I pick up the phone. Now I'm shaking. Hello? J Bo. It's Rick Dees. Hey, buddy. Look, I-, I want you to come out here and fill in. I'm going to the Kentucky Derby. So I need you to, you'll come out and record your parts. I'll come out. All right, Clarence, t- talk to Jable. I-, I love you, and we're going to pay you. Okay, bye. <laughs> I swear to God. And now I'm, I'm like, okay, what just happened? Clarence calls me back and says, can you, like, get a studio in Worcester to do this? I, I said, shh. He goes, nah, nah, never mind. We'll fly you out. Oh. So oh. I get flown out to Rick D's palatial studios in Burbank. Now, I'm in over my head. It's uh, come on, let's you know. It's Rick D's Jabo. Okay, uh, you know I'm a pretty good jock, but that's a much different world I ever experienced. They fly me out, put me up in a hotel. I am petrified <laughs> because now I never had done anything like this. I've done some countdown shows in seventy. Since then, I've done a lot of countdown shows on on the app. So I'm waiting way over my head, and I'm like, how the hell am I going to do this? I'm I'm not. I'm out of my fish out of water now. I'm not in my own zone. But I said, well, screw it. If they think I can do it, fine. Clarence takes me out to dinner. I wake up the next morning. Uh, he picks me up. Rick's car service picked me up at the airport. These Russian guys in big black SUVs picked me up <laughs> wow. at the airport. And they were glasses. I thought, I thought they were either Secret Service or something. I arrive at Rick's studio. It's, on, it's right next to the Warner lot. It's called D's Entertainment. And you walk in, it's like offices, and you see all of his accolades. You see there was an autographed, um, animated Hanna-Barbera cell, autographed by Joseph Bar- Bar- Hanna-Barbera, because wow. he was Rock D's in the Flintstones. Oh. He was the voice of Rock D's, and there was a framed in the lobby signed by the Hanna-Barbera of, of Rock D's in the cartoon. I walk in, and now, if you guys don't know this, Rick loves rotary pots. He hates slide pots. 
in front of me is a, a, a console that's in his logo, D's Digital. It's a digital console with RCA rotary pots, custom made for his studio. Wow. He's not there now. He's at the Kentucky Derby, but his parts are recorded. So I go into the studio. Now, out the window is the Warner lot, the tower. I'm like, okay, I have no idea where I am. I have no idea what I'm doing. I sit down at his mic. You know, he has a beautiful Neumann mic, and his pot is red because I knew it was his. And I'm like, <clears throat> I said, and I hear in my headphones, oh, Jabo, that's Rick's seat. <laughs> Would you mind going to the guest mic across <laughs> the way? Sir, inquires. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so <laughs> that was Paul, the producer. So we start the recording and there's Rick, uh, there's two writers and a producer in Clarence. Now it takes Rick about three hours to do this. It took me six because I had never done it before. And I could see as I'm doing these breaks, I stumble one and I see one writer's head go down because he's tired. I see another writer's like starting to yawn and the whole energy in the room starts to uh, uh, kind of dissipate. But finally, I get to the end. I said, can I go on the air and promote that we're going to do this and that's going to air? And Clarence said, wait till tomorrow. <laughs> I'm like, oh my mm -hmm. God. So finally, the next day I get back and uh, they said, it sounded great. You did a great job. It's going to air. You know, go on the air and promote it. And that's it. And it was a relief because it was really hard to do. I'd never done it before. I get home a couple of days later and I get my uh, Heidi calls me and says, you got an envelope from Rick D's. I said, oh, that must be the reimbursement check for the hotel. She goes, no, it's something else. She opened it up and he sent me a thousand dollars cash out oh. of the envelope as in a oh. thank you. And that's, that's the type of guy he is. He was so sweet. I couldn't believe it. Oh. And it's one of the greatest, uh, and it aired in, in all of his markets and, uh, yeah, Jay, that thousand dollars was from my bank hoist that I had to go. <laughs> from one of the three bank hoists that I had to go. <laughs> but yeah, he was so nice. And um, you know, at that point I feel like, well, I kinda if nothing else happens in my life, at least I could say I was Rick D's for a day. Uh and it it sounded Paul did a great job at editing. He all my stumbles and mistakes and stuff, he took it all out and put it together. You couldn't tell that I was stumbling and bumbly, but um it was an incredible, incredible experience. And he was he's very nice. And we've been friends ever since. He was, he's, he's every once in a while. Guy. Yeah. So that's, uh, that's that's Jabo Jones for those of you who are just joining us with uh, radio friends again. And uh Jabo is currently the uh the guy who's doing 70s on 7. It's uh, You're doing it at night now, uh, right, Jaymo? What are yeah. you doing the show? Yeah, 6 to midnight. Yeah. 6 to midnight. I do, I do that like uh, I was doing it in the morning when I go to ROR, but I'll probably do it a little later in the afternoon now to get it more closer to the day part. I, have I a do real, it right here. I have, I have a real critical question, and that's why we invited you. I thought if you could just tell us, do you know anything about the band Alive and Kicking and the song Tighter and Tighter? <laughs> do you know anything about that song or, you know, the uh, the people behind the band? I do. time, Steve. It was 54 years ago. He won't remember. Know, but, and no, there, but, and there's no and, and in it. <laughs> right. Other than the intro, <laughs> other than the intro, I think it's 14 seconds. That's all I got. <laughs> well, I, I know the story on that. I know the story on that, Steve. Go ahead. I think Ron Pell does too. Yeah, it was given to him by Tommy James. Tommy James yeah. gave him that song. Yeah, that's right. Jabo, yeah. um, Ron Pell's the actual drummer from the uh, original Alive and Kicking, Jabo. Yeah. Really? And he's down yeah. there somewhere yeah. on your screen. Oh, my God. So, so, oh, I'm old, Jabo. And that was Jabo, you don't know. I worked in Hartford when you were there. I worked at DRC. I was the general sales manager for you know, 20 years. And uh I knew I, that. I knew I knew yeah. I, uh, your name is famous in, in well, Hartford. I know, I know. That, but thank you. Not as famous as yours, but but and it's uh, you know, some people still remember me back in the day. But um I you know, I, when you talk about that whole rivalry between TIC, that's what I remember because Tim Montgomery. Yeah. Tim Montgomery was quite a guy. I mean, he was, you know, he, he was he was like the number two guy in top 40 radio in Connecticut. 
But he said, I can make a nice living being number two. And he did. He became yeah. a very wealthy guy. Yeah. And uh, yeah. You know, we competed with Arnold Chase, who owned TIC, and Bob Dunn, who was the general manager at TIC, and Perry Yuri, a name I'm sure you know. And uh, Tim, yeah. to his credit, he he just forged ahead. He, nothing he, nothing stopped him. Positive guy. You know, he had his quirks. He, he Remember Karen Gordon? There's a name you probably yeah. remember. Oh, oh my yeah. God, yes. Yeah. yes. Hey, <laughs> so oh yeah, I went through a lot of different people there, but... Um, but I had a great, uh, great run in Hartford. But yeah, the music, uh, I was just started playing drums with a guy named Bruce Sedano when I was 12 or 13 years old. And Bruce was married to Donna Summer for 32 years until she passed away, sadly. And he has a great career of his own. He's got, he just released another CD. He uh, has written music for a lot of famous people. Um, and uh, he's got a group. He lives half the time in Milan, Italy, and half the time in Los Angeles. Ooh. And uh, yeah, anyway. Wow. Unbelievable. I knew, I knew Tim Montgomery in this. Uh, I think it was the late seventies when he first came up to uh, to Kiss, and he he kept uh, he kept offering me a job to come from New Haven up to Hartford. It was very tempting at the time. And then Perry, then Perry went there, I think after TIC, and um, we, but we had uh, we talked all the time, which was interesting because our formats were not exactly. We weren't competitive. We weren't compatible. But what a what a great uh, station! Dick Perry was actually the general manager of Kiss when it was a classical when it was uh, a classical or not classical. Um, uh, Beautiful music. Yeah, yeah and it was yeah. before he went to TIC, and that was a famous story also that he walked across the street and went to, to that. Uh, yeah, uh, David Chase hired him to run TIC. Um, and Perry was there for a long time, but originally they remember that building J Bo on uh, South Main Street in Hartford, that old mansion. Were you yeah. there then? No, I I was at the Candy Cane building. Oh, okay. I was that at was you know the Candy Cane now. building. Yeah. That's where Kiss was when I got there, and yeah, then they built it out. It's a beautiful old mansion in the south end of Hartford. For um, but then the neighborhood changed and everything, and then yeah. they moved over to the Candy Cane building. But um. Yeah, who was the general? Yeah. Was Tim actually general manager when you were there? Or yeah, they went, yeah. Um, they went over to they yeah. went over to sixty Washington uh, yeah. before they went to the Candy Cane Building. Right, and right. and it was funny because I had right. gotten, I was I got hired to do sales over there, and it was just it had just been beautiful music, and it was a train wreck, man. Everybody trying to explain this hot AC format and everything. So one day I'm walking down the hallway, and now my dad was out of DRC, and he's actually in the hospital, and I was working there, and Tim Montgomery, I loved him. And uh, Tim goes, so Steve, how's it going? I said, it really sucks. I said, as a matter of fact, you have a part-time overnight position that I really want to do. He goes, you want to go on the air? I said, yep. So I was like, I was 95.7 Kiss FM in the middle of 60 minutes of nonstop hits. Once an hour, I got to do that. And then it was <laughs> Kiss Mix. And I would be smoking cigarettes, drinking coffee, eating chocolate, Coca-Cola all night long. But the thing is, uh, Daddy Gould, had a canary. Oh my God. Flip out up one. And all I wanted to do is maybe a few hours a week to feed the beast, you know, with, like I do with TIC. And she goes, You have to decide what you're going to do if you're going to sell or go on the air. I said, Going on the air. And I went to minimum wage, threw the sales list out. But if it weren't for the fact that Tim Montgomery said, Yeah, go ahead and do that. Tim, Tim was always from, even from a sales standpoint, Tim was uh, all the departments, whether the programming sales, we all loved him. Because yeah. Tim was probably like one of the biggest kids in there, and really, oh yeah, really, really had a, a tremendous amount of fun. Now, Jay Bo, you probably you probably know a bit about about Dick Colt that he gave birth to WPLR, right? Who's that? Dick Colt. Yes, who, I don't know. I did, yeah, I mean, I know of that. I know, of course, Dick. I know your name. Uh, but it's a, an iconic station. I mean, we <laughs> ended up when, when when Clear Channel merged with us. That's when I got to know Manuel. Manuel oh, Rodriguez. Oh yeah, Manuel. Yeah, yeah. Yep, I and, see him all this, to this day. Yeah, yeah. and, and, and Man Manuel hired me. What three years after you left, J Bo, to to program Country YZ, which I, I had never done Country wow. before, and um, also the AM, all the Connecticut AM stations. So I worked at the Candy Cane Building too in my last no job kidding. in radio. Yeah. Oh my God, that was that, that was smart of him. Yeah, Manuel was <laughs> so nice, and then I got to know Rob Williams. Uh, oh, when, Rob, good guy. Yes. Rob's great guy. We brought Rob yeah. to Hartford, and yep, um, yep. Just, yep. Wait, actually, I knew Manuel. Rob was a Warner Brothers guy. He, when I was in Albany, he was my Warner Brothers rep. Wow, no Connecticut. kidding. Yeah. Yeah. Oh we yeah, still, we still have uh, many reunions at his uh, at his brewery, 
and he's doing just fine with yeah. his uh, uh with his uh, 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 uh local beer product i have a question for the whole group had uh, how many of you participated this this is going to go back a long way how many of you participated in things like the itsy bitsy teeny weeny yellow polka dot bikini song never ending uh, uh <laughs> type of stuff on the air do you right. remember any of that Never heard of that. Never heard of that we at did, all. We did. Remember, remember Bob Craig? We did Uga Chaga, Uga Uga. Yeah, Uga, Uga Chaga, Uga, Uga yeah, Chaga. Chaga. Oh, okay. The Blue Swede. Yeah. yeah, yeah that was that. Sweet. Somebody yeah, I hear that. that. Uh, I still hear that on um, 70s. On yeah, we 70s. yeah, we play that. Yeah, we play that. I think I, I think, remember Bob, back when I was in Detroit in the 60s that we would do uh, every once in a while, it would be to, um, it might have been a fundraiser that I we're think, just going to play it for. 24 straight hours and you have to send in a donation to this charity otherwise we're not going to stop i think charlie <laughs> charlie took the uga chaga just that yeah. part and looped it oh yeah yes. that was, <laughs> yeah and, and the funny thing is if dave overson uh, uh was here he could tell you because he was there and he, he did he looped it but the weird thing was it goes all the way back to joey reynolds sticking midnight hour back in the 60s at drc and the police broke the door down asked him on the air who his program director was Charlie Parker and I'm standing with my dad in the dining room and he's laughing his butt off while the whole thing is going on. But the weird thing was that when um, while Dave was dubbing that, Joey happened to show up at the station out of the blue and uh, came to Hartford for something. And the two of them uh, got to get to meet each other. That was very, very, very cool. I did the same One thing. One of the stations when... that, uh, did that with they're coming to take me away. Ha ha. <laughs> <laughs> I, I did it with um, with uh, um the OJ's uh, money, money, money. Uh, when when Joey was going to be a, a a sit in as a guest on my show on POP, and so Lance Drake, the production director, and I, uh, we didn't tell Dick Springfield, the program director, that we were going to do this. Hmm. But uh, but be ahead of Joey coming on, we looped money, 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 and ran it for about eight minutes wow. <laughs> until until uh, until Dick uh, until Dick freaked out and then we uh and then we had <laughs> then we stopped and 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 actually brought joey on if yeah, i remember <laughs> correctly if i remember correctly the yoga chaga thing uh it, it tied up the circuits yep. on the, for the phone company <laughs> and the the phone company had people calling charlie and i guess the police called him and you know, <laughs> i guess it ended up it, it ended up at the end of having their own separate uh phone service just for the station you know yeah. Did people think it was record skipping or yep. I don't know what happened was back then, back then when he did it back in the sixties and then with Uga Chaga later, what would happen? He would say, we can get everyone. And what he would do, he would stick it. So like back with POP DRC, back and forth, back and forth. And the first time somebody heard it stuck, they'd start calling the station. They'd call the police. The guy must've died, all this stuff. So, um, so that was the same thing with Uga Chaga, except then it was AM, FM, AM, FM. Do you know your, you know, do you know your AM is stuck or your FM is stuck? Whatever he did, I think it was on the FM then. You know, it's stuck. And um, and that's it. Everybody from the dial all starts here because everybody's, a, you know, a, you know a, just twisting up and down the dial. Yeah. That was <laughs> another one of these. Yeah, there, there, there were some pretty horrible records back then, around the early 70s. That one comes to mind. How about. DOA, remember DOA? Yeah, Blood Rock. Yeah. Oh my God! And Timothy, oh, yeah. Timothy by the oh, Boys. Oh yeah. The DRC, the DRC actually had to take uh, DRC had to take DOA off the air, and that was really they, they had to pull it. We played it. We played it. Yep. Yes, we guys, did. Only for we only did. for a short time at DRC. There was some. Um, How some... about Indiana wants me? We yeah, oh, they, another. They, 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 oh, they had that the hey, 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 Wait yeah, a minute. It. I live in Indiana now. That we're not going there. <laughs> they had to the cut guys, the siren off. Do you remember the I'm siren? Sure. Did That's you guys right. have to edit tonight's the night? Did you guys have to edit tonight's the night? Do you remember that tonight's the night, Rod Stewart? We never edited anything. <laughs> nice. Do you remember oh, that Kodachrome, with a smile. Kodachrome by Paul Paul Simon? Oh, and the, all I mean, that crap I learned in high school. Yeah, WBC yeah. Oh. Ed edited crap out of uh, out of. I that. mean, when you have to edit the word crap out of a song, are you thinking about it today? But back then, it was. Did you hear what he said? That's yeah. right. Do you remember, Do you remember a recording? Do you remember a recording by the Kingston Trio? 
in the early 60s it was called greenback dollar yeah and in it they said like, don't give a I damn don't give, don't give a damn about a group and i think capital redid it and took out the word damn this is around yeah. 61 62. Yeah. Yeah. rko rko in boston edited tonight's the night spread your wings and let me they took that out it was a minute 50. The song was like a minute 50. They took out that whole minute and a half verse. The song ended up being like a minute 50 on RKO because was that was a song too that, risque. that none of you ever would have played ever. That was probably one of the best instrumentally produced songs by Frank Zappa and it was called Dynamo Hum. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and I don't know if you're familiar with it. You no. Know. Yeah, yeah. But if you listen to the song for the musical value of it, and of course the the, the lyrics are enough to get you arrested back then. So yeah. I was I was with Frank. He was he was up at the station, and he would come up maybe a couple of times a year, and you know, and and we'd have lunch, and we got to know each other. And he, he was not exactly a normal person, <laughs> uh, but, a, but absolutely brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. And I always said to him, I said, you know, the best song you ever produced, nobody will ever play. He says, oh, you mean Dino Home, Dynamo Home? <laughs> I said, yeah. I said, well, why or what did you think of that? He said, I didn't I didn't produce it because I cared about whether it went on the radio. He said, I was telling the story the, of, of the world the way I thought she saw it. Oh, boy. <laughs> Hey, um, I don't real, real remember here. Harry Nilsson's song from the uh, 70s, uh, You Break in My Heart, so fuck You tore you. it apart. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, and that's, that song. That, that's the same album that had I Sang My Balls Off for You, Baby. <laughs> and that was Pink Floyd with uh, Don't Give Me That Do Good Bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> hey, listen, real quick, I got to jump in here only because uh, John Leslie, I know John likes to kind of keep things tight when he can. He likes to... Kind of, and I don't want to give John too much editing. So, John, uh, with um, talking about radio, if you do have to do anything to get into where you, uh, I know you try to keep things at about an hour, um, feel free to do that because it's so cool, John, that that you're actually recording with us for talking about uh, about radio. But uh, what do you think, John? Have we done a, a lot of talking about radio? I've been, yes, I've been listening uh, with listeners' ears to this, uh, radio listener ears, and that's, our audience on our podcast and they're from all over the world. And I think they will enjoy this. They'll, they'll certainly enjoy J Bo's stories. I mean, they're, Oh they, yeah. They were riveting. And, uh, uh, I'm going to find out, you know, I, I get a lot of feedback and if, uh, we'll see what, what the listeners say, how, how many downloads I get, uh, how long people listen. Uh, I know exactly where they are downloaded two uh so there's a lot of a lot of data that, hey john do you do you keep track of your downloads i mean you big you big you have advertisers so i guess you have to do that yes how many download do you share how many downloads you actually get on average well uh i don't know if everybody knows what that even means some of but... the bigger names uh uh pete was over over ten thousand downloads oh that's good oh uh, wow the that's uh the awesome. nbc yeah. retrospective was 12 or 13,000, I think. But mm -hmm. see, they all, uh, also, the podcast is on five, I think more than five internet stations. They rebroadcast it. Uh -huh. So there are a lot of ears that I can't count. Right. Uh, if the, the podcasts are immediately, as soon as I put them up, they're downloaded to Australia, to Japan, to India, uh, and a couple of a Canada and a couple of other countries. And the only reason that they would download those immediately would be not to listen to them, but to rebroadcast them. Well, I think so, uh, uh, what, what I think, uh, what I'll, what I'll do then, I, I can't thank you enough for anyone who's, uh, who's listening to this. Um, uh, I would say that uh, if you get a chance, you want to go up on YouTube, you'll find radio friends again. And we've got quite a few of them there, especially if uh, John's kind enough to be to to not edit my part out. <laughs> but uh, John, we certainly appreciate the the cross uh, uh, recording of this program. Um, and if there's any way in the future, I mean, I, and actually, I, I did get the uh, uh, heads up this week that Sandy Beach is going to be one of our guests in the uh, not too distant future. 
Um, Sandy wants to come on. And he's in the uh, Radio Hall of Fame and also the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame for one of the records that he worked with. So, um, John, I can't thank you enough. But what I will do now, um, I'm going to stop the recording um, just because I want to. Uh, I don't want to make this much of a nightmare. And what we do all the time when we stop the recording is everybody stays and it's like backstage and we can talk about whatever we like. So if you can uh, if you can hang on and ask Jabo any questions or if anybody has to go, you won't hurt anyone, anyone's feelings. The whole thing with Radio Friends, again, is stop by any time. But uh, certainly I can't uh, thank you guys uh, enough and can't thank John Leslie enough. So let me let me just run down who people have been listening to on this, uh, this dual uh, recording. Um, and let me just take it down. So when I miss you, please pipe in. I can only keep an eye on so many things the way my screen is split up. Um, Tracy Carmen, of course, uh, John Leslie from radio, uh, talk, talking about radio. Uh, Pete Salance here, Bob Craig, Judge Harrigan, uh, Dick Colt, Ed Bruder, Bob Marks, Ron Pell, Jack Lawrence, Jim Harrington, Dave Nagel, Chuck Martin, John Landry. I'm Steve Parker. Who did I miss? Ed miss me, Ed. Steve. Oh, there he is, Ed, Ed Mitchell. Who else? Okay. Me, Lee, Lee Gordon. Gordon. Oh, Lee Gordon, yep. A couple of those popped off my screen. And Oh, yeah. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, uh, throw in one last thing here. Um, my, I was my honor, along with uh, uh, Lee Gordon uh, and j -Bo. The three of us all worked uh, for Liberty Broadcasting at the same time. Um, uh, at the same time. And Lee was the voice of WFSB. Jabo was NBC 30 and I was WTNH channel. Eight. Oh my God. And we That's all worked amazing. at the same radio station. At the same time. <laughs> but that was definitely, I have to say that was like probably the, one of the, just, I, just one more thing real quick, Steve, August yeah, sure. 18th, the Connecticut radio reunion in Portland. That's still going on, right? It sure is. Okay. Well, I am driving up from, from Virginia beach to be wow. here. So no excuses. If you're not around, We've all got to go there. It's well, important. we're going to promote the fact that you're going to be there, Pete. And no, because of that, I'm sure we'll get. Oh no, we, <laughs> that'll help us get more. We yeah, had sure. Steve. We had what 110 <laughs> for the 100th 100th anniversary. But on average, great. we would get we get about between 40 and 50 people show up for that on average. But because you're going to be there, Pete, I'm sure we're going to do better than that. Uh, thanks, well, thanks. You know, no pressure. No pressure. I, well, I don't want to get your autograph, Pete. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, I, sure. can, I hope you can handle the 10,000 people that are going to show up. That's hey, great. Listen, <laughs> to have it. The Farrell, Farrell's has been great. And everybody who's ever done this, we did uh, Harbor Park for a long time. And um, I, we will say we have no format, no idea. It's exactly what we do here. It's a schmooze, a schmooze fest. Huh? Mm -hmm. It's a schmooze fest. Yeah. And some right. people like, I didn't even know that Joe Cipriano was there the last time. Well, I'm going to try to get him out again. So <laughs> so people came in from all over the country. But yeah, and uh, uh, Chuck. Perils and uh, <laughs> so we appreciate that. But uh, well, last year we had one table had Lee Gordon, Joanne Nesty and Jerry Brooks. Oh, now, my God. You don't do better than that, do you? No. All sitting yeah. at the same yeah. table at that reunion last great. year. That's great. Jerry's a great guy. Yeah, great he's, guy. he's so nice. He did some work for us at the Connecticut Radio Network. He was the best man at my first wedding. Oh, my yeah, God. Right? He's kind of he like was, a radio guy. He, really, he was an he's intern, on TV. all star in radio. Yeah. Joanne Nesty, when I went to WPOP. In 1976, when I started at DRC, I needed, I had, I was, had an account and I needed a female voice. So I called Jeff Menzel, who was running CSB at the time, the late Jeff Menzel. And he said, I got somebody for you. It's a young lady named Joanne Nesty. She's looking for work. She won't be expensive and she's trying to break into the business and she's got a great voice. I said, we'll send her over. So she called me. She came over, did the spot. It's Joey and Nesty. <laughs> I mean, oh you know. <laughs> One of the greatest That's stories awesome. that we got was uh, Ron and I, when we were working with Dick Colt at uh, CRN, we also worked with the Connecticut Network, which is like C-SPAN at the Capitol. And yep. Matt Sheehan and Joanne Nesty came in and did a spot together. For yeah, I remember that. Wow. Yeah, yeah. they did. Much more uh, when I when I was in Worcester at WORC AM, I was I think like sixteen, and um, driving in one day because I used to go hang out after school, and on oh I heard this beautiful news voice, um like you know when you hear that first time you hear somebody you know they're destined for a major market, I'm listening like who is that who's this news person so polished almost tv like and we got in i'll get in the building and i'm like people are talking blah, blah, blah. 
how do you know the new person I just sees? And I look, I peek in the, the studio and, and this beautiful young 20 something woman is in there. I'm like, oh my God, not only is she gorgeous, she sounds amazing on the air. It was Meredith Vieira. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> They had hired her out of school at like Emerson, one of the colleges. She was out of college. She sounded that way now. now, Then (laughs) it was Meredith Vieira. And she was this 20, beautiful kid. And she was at JAR radio within six months. JAR TV after that in Providence and then right to CBS within a two year quick, very fast ascension to network, but I'll never forget it. I'm like, wow, that's a a major market news person. It was, it was Meredith. I don't think she remembered me. You predicted it. I don't think you remember me. (laughs) Okay. Before I kill, I gotta, I really gotta kill the recording. So Dave doesn't get crazy on his end. Uh, And I know Bob Marks had uh, made a couple of comments to me while it was going on. Bob, was there something you wanted to ask Jabo or anything else, Bob? Um, no, not really. Although I have to say that I've only tuned in seventies on seven a few times. My wife is a big, uh, uh, lover of sixties on six. So yeah. Yeah. We listen to sixties on six most of the time, j Sorry about that, man. That's okay. They're, <laughs> they're great guys. They're all great guys over there. Shotgun Tom is such a nice guy. Oh my God. What? They're all fantastic guys over there. They are. They're good. Really yeah. good. And they're good jocks too. You know? Well, j has been our, our special guest this week. So is there anybody else that has a question for j before we stop the recording? So glad you're here. Oh, it's, it's an honor to be yeah. here, guys. It's yeah. a lot of fun. This is really great. I, I'm really course. excited to see you. Thank you so much, Dick. It means a lot. Well, hopefully you'll be able to come back and hang with us, j because it really is. And, and Pete Salant pointed this out. He's got a pretty good background as a uh, clinical social worker, which is one, one of the things I enjoyed was when he said inside, instead of, you know, dealing with people on a therapeutic level with radio, millions of people. Now he does it one-on-one, but, uh, <laughs> but Pete made the comment to us that this is probably, um, this is therapy. This is therapy for all of us. And Pete, wouldn't you say something about Alzheimer's or something like that? What was it? I don't want to quote you, Pete. What did you say about this? Um, coming every week or as often as you can keeps your brain right. working Social and stimulated. Connection. Right. Exactly. So that um, it, <laughs> it's been proven to stave off, or at least, at least, you know, um, if not make it go away, keep it away for as long as possible. And our under, our under, um, our unofficial. No, I guess we can say our official sponsor of Radio Friends again is uh, the Broadcasters Foundation of America, and uh, and uh, T.J. Lambert turned us on to that. And um, if you guys or anybody's out there having some struggles, whether it's uh, financially or physically or anything. Um, you know, go to uh, go to the Broadcasters Foundation of America, and they're there to help you. And a lot of great people contribute to it and run it. Um, we didn't know anything about it until TJ um, uh, introduced us to it, and uh, so we want to uh, definitely uh, go there if you have to. I'm going to jump off here, and uh, and uh, uh, John Leslie, um, you can if you want to. You maybe already killed the recording on your end. If not, you want to fun. But um, I just want to uh, get off here. But everybody, please stay or go if you have to go. But, um, I have to go as well, but it's been an honor to be with all you guys. Thanks, I Dick. Really enjoy it. Dick, thanks for thanks being here, here, everybody. Yeah, I got to head out, but it's Steve, thank you for the invite. I, I will definitely come back and uh, get some of these great stories. The, it's so great that you guys do this. And it's and I agree with what Pete said. There's something very special about connecting and remembering these fantastic times and seeing how great all you guys are doing. So thank you for I'm really honored that you uh have me be a part of it. Jabo, give my Thank give you. my best to Heidi. I will. <laughs> I promise, Jabo. I promise. As long as you stop back, you remember that. You remember that. Uh, that well, it was that holiday party. Um, we we got just one or two pictures, and as long as you remember to come back, Jabo, you'll be fine. Or seven. Have a good seven. weekend, guys. <laughs> okay. Love before the you stories, guys, Jabo, love the Bye. stories. Before you guys, Thank you guys. Off, uh, before you take off, I want to mention that. Uh, my podcast talking about radio has a Facebook page and it's called talking about radio. And it's like this, the, all of the conversation is like this. It is not, Oh, woe is the radio business. And I got canned for doing, you know, for no reason at all. It's sharing radio stories and remembering and uh, trivia. And it, it's a lot of fun. Take a look at it. Talking about radio on Facebook. 
for this edition of Talk, Talking About Radio with uh, with John Leslie and uh, and also uh, radio friends again. I'm Steve Parker. And uh, hey, listen, man, thanks a lot for uh, just hanging with us to uh, to talk about radio. I think it's really uh, fantastic. All of my radio friends, we'll catch you next time. Uh, next week, uh, I think it's going to be the, uh, I, I always screw this up, I think it'll be the 17th of May. We'll be back again with Radio Friends again. Catch you next time. Have a Bye, guys. Day. See you later, man. Bye. Your friend, your friend has got a lot to share.